We've been talking about these butterfly eggs and how they're born onto dark and quiet leaves, hidden from everything else. And a mom butterfly is so incredibly intentional about where she pla lays her eggs. That leaf on that plant is no coincidence. The reason that it is very intentional and specific is because once the caterpillar is hatched and emerges, it begins the, immediately begins the important work of eating the leaf it was born onto. It does not need to go to the plant next door or the leaf down the street. Exactly where it's born, that leaf is where it's supposed to start eating. Caterpillars grow very quickly and their skin does not stretch or grow. So in order to get to its full size, it will molt and shed its skin several times over. And for us as Jesus followers in this, these seasons of transformation, the molting and shedding of our skins is a process we continue to have to go through over and over, regardless of our age, maturity, or season of life. And that can only happen through a season of crawling. The crawling phase is that time when you feel like God has abandoned you. When you feel like that word, that promise, that calling, or that vision has died that God has forgotten completely about it and it no longer exists. As painful as it feels to us, this crawling season though, is not as much about the pain as it is about growth. God's intent for us in this crawling season is to feast and grow, feast and grow right where we are. Because the more we feast and grow, the more we had to shed our old, ugly, sinful skins. When we're living through a season of crawling, we focus so much on the pain we focus on so much on how it hurts to shed these skins, but I think God would have us retrain our brains and instead focus on the growth that's happening to be transformed from the inside out by the renewing of our minds. But it's so hard to do, right? <laughs> so hard to do. Because instead of eating and growing right where we are, we start looking around at what everybody else is eating and how everybody else is growing. It makes the process so much more painful but you know, it shouldn't be a surprise that we go through these kind of pains. In Isaiah 66, nine, God very clearly says, I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born. So we know that the pain will be coming, but it's kind of like I think when you have a baby, for those of you that have had children, you don't spend the entire nine months focusing on the pain of labor and delivery. You spend the entire nine months focusing on life and the fact that something amazing is about to be born, that an actual life that will live on forever and a soul is gonna be birthed. And yes, it's uncomfortable, and yes, it hurts sometimes, but the focus of pregnancy isn't the pain, it's the life. And when we're crawling, the focus should not be on the pain, but the life that God is growing in us as well. I always think of David the Psalmist when it comes to a crawling season, because to me, he was a master of navigating what this was like. A promise was given to him. The prophet Samuel told him, you are gonna be king of all Israel. But almost immediately, David goes into a crawling season that lasts really decades, hiding, quite literally crawling through deserts and caves, his life in danger, questioning and wondering where God went and when is this gonna to come to fulfillment? In Psalm 7, 1, he says, save me from those who are chasing me, rescue me or they will tear me to pieces as a lion devours his prey. And in Psalm 59, he says, I've done nothing wrong, yet they rush ahead to start the assault. I beg you to come save me pretty painful times of crawling. But the amazing part is though that David went through a season of crawling, his mindset doesn't stay stuck there. He doesn't give himself the luxury of focusing just on the pain. As you read his Psalms, every single time his questioning and wondering where God went turns and ends up into words of praise. After he told God in Psalm 7 that he felt like he was being chased by a lion, he said, God is my defender. He rescues those who are pure in heart. And in Psalm 59, after begging God to come, he says, I will sing of your strength. I will awake with the sun and sing of your loving mercy because in my most troubled hour, you defended me. At any point in time, God could have snapped his holy fingers and made David king. But God was so much more concerned about David's character than he was his calling. And the same goes for us. He is so much more concerned about our character than the callings that are placed on us. He allows crawling not for the sick pleasure of us going through pain, but so that we might grow through it. David remembered his anointing because of the crawling, and that's what kept him going. He remembered who God was and who God's character was and trusted his faith in that, and that's what made him a man after God's own heart. 
David's example gives us a crucial takeaway for the crawling season, that the time span of our crawling is not nearly as, port, as important as our mindset during it. God cannot bring fulfillment of his word birthed in us until we have crawled and molted and shed and grown. And that includes the shedding of our interpretations of how things are going to work out. There's no easy formula to get out of this. If you look through all the stories in the Bible, there's no one magic thing that happened to enable these people to any story to move past crawling and into cocooning and flying. But it's very empowering because while crawling is a spiritual phase we have to go through, it's not a mindset we have to stay anchored to. We get to choose how we think. We get to choose to whom we pray. We get to walk with God. We get to feast on his word. We get to pray at any moment knowing he will always hear us and never forsake us. We're not nearly as stuck as we tell ourselves that we are. Crawling keeps our bellies to the ground, but praising God brings our spirits and our souls flying into the sky, regardless of our season.